Hello class, we're going to cover um, 1.8b. And so in this, um, when we did 1.8a, we were solving inequalities and we were solving linear inequalities and then we eventually were solving quadratic inequalities. So that same concept that we learned in solving quadratic inequalities, we're going to extend it into solving polynomial inequalities. So the process is still going to be exactly the same as it was when we were solving quadratic inequalities. So the first thing you will do is find the zeros and then you'll arrange them in uh, from least to greatest on a number line. Those, um, those values are called key numbers and those key numbers will create some intervals and then you will test each interval by picking an X value in each interval and evaluating the polynomial at that value, okay? And so then you'll basically be plugging them back into the original inequality and seeing whether or not you get a true statement or a false statement, okay? So there's really not much lecture to give in this section. Um, it's more of just application and practicing what we already knew about quadratics, but extending that into polynomials. So for our first example, we have this function. So if I want to find the zeros, I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to change it to an equal sign. And then I'm going to solve this equation for x. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to move over that to 16. And then the only way I can solve a polynomial equation is by factoring. So um, to factor this guy, we're going to do grouping. So let me grab another color real quick. And we're going to group these like this. So these two guys have an x squared in common, which will leave me with x plus 6. Um, to know that for sure, I would distribute this in my head. And if I get these two terms, then I know that I factored out the x squared correctly. Then here, I have no choice, but I have to bring down that minus. And I'm not sure if 36 will go into 216. So let me see here. Um, 216 divided by 36. Um, it does go in. It goes in six times. So then that means I'm going to factor out a 36 here. And so when I factor out that 36, I'm going to end up with a positive x and a positive 6. And again, I can distribute this just to make sure. So we can do uh, negative 36 times x and then negative 36 times 6. And it does give me these two terms. So as I keep going, um, these two terms have the x plus 6 in common. And so then what I have left is x squared minus 36. And if I set each of these factors equal to 0, I can also factor that further, or I can just solve it by extracting roots. So I'm just going to solve it by extracting roots. Um, here, I would minus 6 on both sides and get x equal to negative 6. Here, I would add 36 on both sides and get x squared equals positive 36. And then I would take the square root on both sides, giving me plus or minus. So the square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 36 is 6. So I have two answers. I have x equal to 6 and negative 6, and this is a repeated solution. So it's the same number, which means when I draw my number line, um, since that's the same key number, I'm only going to have one key number of negative 6 and one key number of positive 6. Now I'm going to test these intervals. So in this interval, I'm going to test negative seven. In this interval between a negative and a positive, I always like to test a zero. And then over here on this side, I'll test seven. And how do I test it? I'm going to plug it into my original inequality and see if it's true or false. So I'm going to plug this into here. I'm gonna say negative seven cubed plus six times negative seven squared minus 36 times negative seven, um, less than or equal to 216. And so I'm gonna type all of this in my calculator. So bear with me while I do that, parentheses, negative seven raised to the third power, get down, plus six, negative seven squared, 
minus 36 times negative seven and hit enter. And I get 203 is less than or equal to 216. Now that is true. 203 is um, less than or equal to 216. So then that means that this section does check out. And so I'm gonna say true here and I'm gonna color this all in. Okay, then now we're gonna go test the next number, zero. So we're gonna plug in zero for X. And so then when I type all of this in the calculator, I will get zero is less than or equal to 216. And it looks like zero is also less than or equal to 216. So this section works as well. And then finally, I can test positive seven. And I'm gonna plug that into the function. I'm just gonna erase my negatives. So we'll delete the negative there, delete the negative there. And oops, delete the negative there. And we get 385. But 385 is not less than 216. So this one was false. So here we got true and here we got false. So this section will not be shaded, okay? Now, looking at the inequality symbol, we see a bar there. So ideally, this section would have a bar, and this section would have a bar, and then this section would have a bar. However, because it seems to be including negative six because of the brackets, this is a seamless interval from negative infinity all the way to positive six, because this number negative six is included in both of these intervals. So when I write my final answer, I do need to combine this into one total interval. So what is my solution? My solution is going to be from negative infinity all the way to positive six with a bracket, okay? Now that's different than if this problem did not have an equal bar because then these would be parentheses. And if they were parentheses, then I would not be including this negative six and then therefore I would have to write this interval union, that interval and everybody having parentheses, okay? Um, so be careful when you're trying to put your intervals together like that. And then this situation also never happened when we had quadratics, right? Either the section in the middle would work or the two sections on the outside would work, but never did you have like two pieces that worked and then one that didn't, okay? Um, and so that's new and it can happen when you have polynomials. So let's go ahead and move on to our next practice problem. And I think this is the last practice problem of the assignment. They're all going to be pretty much the same. You change the inequality to an equal sign. You factor that polynomial. You find the key numbers. You create your number line. Then you test each interval in that number line. And then that gives you your solution. Okay, and so we're gonna follow that same process here with this problem. So with this problem, I'm going to temporarily change it to an equal sign. And then I'm going to solve this. Now I do see that they have an X in common. And since I solved the last one by completing, by uh, extracting roots, just to be different, just so that you know that you can do it this way, I'm gonna do this one by factoring. So I'm gonna factor this difference of two squares. Here I could have factored it, but instead I chose to just set it equal to zero. And I mentioned that I could have factored it, but I didn't. So this time, even though it's not 36, I'm gonna do it factoring. So you can see that you'll get the same result, okay? So I would do X times X, five times five, and the difference of squares formula tells me one is gonna have a plus and one is gonna have a minus. And then if I set each one of these factors equal to zero, I get x equal to zero, 
here I get x equals to negative 5. And here, if I add 5 over, I get x equal to positive 5. OK? So we have three key numbers in this situation. I didn't have a repeated one like the last problem. So I'm going to still do everything the same. I'm going to create my number line. And negative 5 would be first, then 0, then positive 5. And then I'm going to test each in a row. So I'm going to plug in a number here, like negative 6, plug in a number here, like negative 1, a number here, like positive 1, and a number here, like positive 6. And I'm going to plug each of these into that inequality. So I get negative 6 cubed minus 25 times negative 6 and greater than or equal to 0. And so if I type that in my calculator, give me a second, parentheses, negative 6 raised to the third, um, minus 25, negative 6. I get negative 66. But negative 66 is not greater than 0. So this part right here was false, which means it will not be part of my solution. Now I'm going to try negative 1. And so I'm plugging it in my calculator, and I get positive 24. Now positive 24 is greater than or equal to 0. So this section is true, which means everything in the middle in that interval is going to be part of my solution. Now I'm going to try the next test number. I'm going to plug in 1. And I get 1 minus 25, which is negative 24. And negative 24 is not greater than or equal to 0. So again, I get a false statement in here which means this interval will not be part of my answer. And then finally, I'm going to test the last one. So 6 cubed minus 25 times 6. And when I plug in all of that in the calculator, give me one second to do that, I get positive 66, which is greater than or equal to 0. So this section comes out true as well, which means this interval will be part of my answer. So then what is my solution? Before I get there, this does have a bar. So I will have brackets around this interval and a bracket on this side, but on this side, it's going to infinity. And we know that infinities don't get brackets, right? So my solution is going to be from my key number negative five to the other key number zero. And then the last interval is from the key number positive 5 to infinity, OK? And so then that is my solution. You really cannot um, know which sections are going to work and which ones aren't unless you find the key numbers, you test each interval by plugging those test numbers into the original in, um, inequality and determining on whether or not you get something that's true or false, OK? Only the sections that tested true are going to be part of your solution. But that is it for this section. It's not a big, long one, but there's plenty of problems for you to practice in the web assignment.